Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant, CCIE12933 here, and in today's three-minute tutorial, we're going to take a look at the OSPF ASBR and actually configure a live Cisco router as an ASBR. We also have a video out on the area border router. You don't need to watch that one before you watch this one, but if you haven't seen it yet, I strongly recommend it for both NA and NP candidates. Here are the networks that we're working with, and I've actually added one or two here and let me bring the diagram up and we'll show you exactly what we've done. Router 3 is the key here because Router 3 is running both RIP and OSPF and Router 3 is currently an area border router because on Router 3 we took a loop back and put it into a non-backbone area. Also on Router 4 we've added a loop back and we're advertising it to Router 3 via RIP. So let's bring the live equipment up here and we'll take a look at all of that. First off, let's go back to router 3 and run show IP OSPF. You can see fourth line down in the show IP OSPF content, it is an area border router. So we know it's acting as an ABR. We also know that it's getting this route from router 4 over that RIP network. But by default, router 1 which is router 3's OSPF neighbor is not going to see that RIP route. See it sees the loop back on router 3 but it doesn't see that RIP route because that's something we have to perform route redistribution for that to happen. So what we're going to do is do exactly that. Always put that subnets option there. If you're not getting the subnets you think you should be seeing, uh, you definitely want to go back and add that and not just put redistribute rip. We'll leave the redistribute connected off and let's see if just that quickly anything happened or is different on router 1. And it is that uh, those two RIP networks, the one RIP network is 4000, and then it's also picking up 172.23.23.0 because that is a RIP enabled segment. Now Router 1 has a complete routing table, and that's what route redistribution can do for us. You also want to keep an eye out for this code. If you're not familiar with what that OE2 is, I've got a video out there as well. You definitely need to know that before you take your NA or your NP exam. Now, when you've got those routes on the routing table just that quickly, does that make router 3 an ABR and an ASBR? Is that possible? Yes, it is. And that's why I wanted to have this as an area border router from the previous video, and I left that config on because I get asked this a lot. You know, can an OSPF router be an ABR and an ASBR? Yes, it can, because again, they're two different roles. With the area border router, you have a router that's um, connecting a non-backbone area to a backbone area, and that's exactly what we have. If we review the config real quick, we can see that on the OSPF. You can see that I put that loop back into area 3 and it's also in area 0 already. So that makes it an ABR. But what makes it an ASBR is that we took routes from outside the OSPF domain and in this instance they were RIP routes and put them into OSPF. Sometimes that's referred to as injecting the routes and when you do that that makes this router an ASBR and as we saw and I just want to show you one more time spelling OSPF correctly this time, that a router can be an ABR and an ASBR. So if you haven't taken a look at that other three minute tutorial with the ABR, please do so. And we've got some other ones on YouTube and the Bulldog blog for you as well. I'll see you next time with another three minute tutorial. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE12933.